Good morning. So yesterday, I had actually spent quite a bit of time developing a video about some negative things that I was experiencing or harping on in my own mind. And I think I even did two videos. And the first video I did was like 40 minutes long and it was basically like I called a girlfriend and just went on and on and on and on and on while, you know, she folded her laundry or something, you know, like literally I had the floor and I was just bitching, but I was bitching in like a, um, educate you kind of way <clears throat> about something that I was mad about. And it really was a, uh, you know, like a rant more than anything. So I erased that and then I went about my business and I like to erase things like that because like something that I do that I like, you know, I might revisit my own video about something that happened that was a positive thing, something that happened that was a fun thing, something that happened that made me smile or laugh or, or, you know, experience any kind of positive emotion from, you know, some kind of enjoyment. But I realized hanging on to ones that carry so much negative impact, even in, in my library, so to speak, would be detrimental. So I not only erase it off of my, uh, you know, my Google Photos library, I'll go and into my, you know, to my cloud and I'll actually go and erase it from there and then delete it from my trash. Like I take the extra steps to literally get rid of that. So <clears throat> I got rid of that one and then I went home, you know, from doing this and uh, decided I, I'm still in it, you know, and my, I'm still hanging around in that vibration. So, you know, I wanted to still address the thing, but I was going to do like the Reader's Digest version of it. So I think I did like a, 11 minute video or something, right? Well, it still was the same tear. It still was the same um, aggravation. It just was like a little bit more toned down because I was able to have gotten kind of my roar out at the barn and now I'm, you know, more just a little bit of a growl still, but I'm definitely still, you know, tearing around about it. And then I rewatched that video a couple times to decide is this some kind of material I'd want to put out there? Is this something that I'd want to put out there for a couple reasons? One, do I want anyone else to have to like pick up on the vibrations of the negativity and then, you know, have to, you know, find a place for that in their own day because now they've subjected themselves to listening to me and that maybe it triggered something that they've experienced and who knows, maybe, you know, it'll set them off for their day. And then I had to decide too if I really would want that type of energy associated with me. And, and is that good for my image, if you will, that I'm focusing on, you know, something very negative. So I again made the decision, but not right away, to go ahead and erase that one as well. Well, Prior to making the decision to erase that, I started to watch the things that were starting to unfold for me. The first thing that unfolded that let me know that you're going in the wrong direction here with your energy today was my applesauce fell out of the little sleeve. You know, like I get those snack size applesauces. Fell out of the little sleeve, fell on the floor, and cracked the little plastic container, and now it was just oozing out of the side of the container. So my decision is I can transfer it, and transfer it into a different container or I can uh, throw that one away or I can eat it right now. So transferring it into a different container because the intention of it in the first place was to have it for my lunch. So I went and I had the perfect little container, like my mind went right to the perfect little container and I went in and you know, found my perfect little container and nowhere for the life of me could I find the perfect little container's lid. 
So now, of course, I can't use it because it's a liquid, so it's not like I could just throw tin foil over it or saran wrap over it. You know, I'm going to be putting it in a lunch pail. It has to be a sealed container. So now that particular container is completely useless to me until the day I find its lid. But it's just fitting that today, that day, I couldn't find the lid. Um, then the next thing that happened was, the, so, so far, the things that are happening, luckily I am very, very, very in tune to how my energy affects things that happen around me, but I wasn't giving it enough credit, so I was still, um, you know, just kind of dealing with the things that were happening, and, uh, the next thing that happened <clears throat> was I opened the refrigerator to, or the freezer to get out my cooler things that go in the bottom of my, you know, my lunch pail and noticed they weren't in there. Then I went to my lunch thing and what did I find? They're still in there from Friday. Pretty warm. <laughs> Certainly not going to offer any kind of cooling, uh, value to my lunch bag today. So had a little bit of a, oh uh, wow, I can't believe that. <clears throat> and then uh, I opened my refrigerator or my freezer and I found that my husband had forgotten his when he left. So I was like, cool, bonus, you know, I, I recovered. So what was cool about that and what I'm, I'm hoping I can influence you on on that is to say, something bad was happening but then there was a recovery like that small container that didn't have the lid but i i had for whatever reason reached to the top shelf and found another small type container this one was glass but it had a lid and it will work for what i needed it to work for in fact it made it so i can go and open up my other applesauce and put it in the same little container so now both my applesauces are open but they're in this nice secure with a lid container and they're combined. Um, then to have my, you know, my ice things not available to me for use and then to find a substitute for that. So my, my energy was kind of saying, look, you know, you're still, you're still able to recover from this mood, from this vibration. If you just keep seeing how you're getting, you know, redirected you're getting redirected like this looks bad but wait you know this looks bad but wait this looks bad but wait here's a solution here's a solution here's a solution so when I started noticing that I kept finding solutions to the different things that were happening I realized what was going on okay but still I I don't know I was somehow addicted to my little video and I watched it a couple times and I watched it I think even in the morning on my way not on my way to work but while I was waiting for my truck and I get in my truck and I take my truck to the first job site and I'm trying to do a good job by making sure that the load that I'm dumping is in the driveway and doesn't fall off the curb out into the road because the guys that are working are not there yet so you know, as far as the job site's concerned, that material has to be contained in a safe place, which is in the driveway, not in the road where somebody can possibly run into it, trip on it, whatever. You know, you have to think of all those safety things. So in effort to maintain a safety, I uh, back tight up against the pile that I, I slightly dropped a little in the driveway already because, um, it had a big drop off and I wanted to make sure that I had something to roll up on. And when I did that, apparently I had rolled, you know, I had let enough of it out that it created a tall enough mound that when I backed up again, I rolled right up onto my, my mud flap. When I rolled up onto my mud flap, it ripped it right off the truck. Now, I'm not the type to just call my boss if I can avoid it and say, hey, I just broke your truck. I'm the type to say, what would I need to fix this? You know, so that was the moment when I said, all right, I'm done with my negative, my negative stuff. You know, I'm done with it because, you know, this is clearly a pattern 
of repetitive things happening to me. So, oh yeah, I forgot my dog <laughs> who just walked in the room. She, uh, before I left, before the mud flap thing, my dog has been giving me a hard time about coming in when she knows that mommy's leaving for the day. Like I can get her in almost any other time, but when I'm getting ready to leave, she, you know, she picks up on all the signs that I'm getting ready to leave. So when she knows I'm getting ready to leave, she won't come when I call her, no matter what I do. Cheese, cookies, leash shipment to make her think she's coming down here, nothing, nothing helps. So, hold on, I have to <clears throat> change stalls. I'm gonna just pause. Okay, so my dog, I looked at the clock. I'm like, ah, you got 15 minutes. Maybe you'll get it out of your system. Go ahead and go out with the other two. Because normally I'll just let the other two out. Like, I've started a pattern of just letting the other two out. And then I'll put her on a leash. And I'll walk her for, you know, a little business. Maybe not spend too long out there with her. But, you know, just long enough for her to know, for me to know she had some kind of final relief before I left. Um... But for whatever reason, looked at the clock and said, ah, I got 50, you got 15 minutes. You'll get it out of your system. And she looked at me kind of like, I'd like to go out too. So I said, okay, go. And I kind of knew when I let her out that this was going to be a problem, but I still just, you know, put myself in that position. So now it's time to leave. I'm calling her, calling her, calling her, trying to bribe her with every little thing that I try to bribe her with. Nothing. She's actually at the far end of the yard, just laying down, looking at me and, you know, occasionally turning her head towards the wilderness and barking. And I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not mad, but I'm frustrated. I'm like, oh, this, is, this cannot be happening right now. I need to go, um, whatever. So I, I have to put on different shoes because what would definitely just send me over the edge as if I went out there chasing her and I stepped in a pile of dog poop, that would definitely end my morning under any circumstance. So, um, change my shoes, I go out, and then she gets down on her elbows like, yay, you've come out to play. And I'm like, no, we're not playing, you know, we have to come in, we're not playing, we're not playing. And she's like, oh, but we are. And she ran around a little bit and then, um, she showed me she's about to go around the side of the house. Uh, she got down on her elbows and then she jumped in that direction. And I was like, oh, come on, we're not, I don't want to chase you. Like literally, I don't want to chase you around the house. So I took one more step towards her and of course off she goes around the house. And she's doing it with, you know, like tail tucked under her, you know, -hee -hee, I'm having fun. This is just a, you know, a really fun game. I'm playing with mommy, you know, kind of thing. So I decide, okay, fine, whatever. I'm going to go and, you know, catch her on the other side of the house. I waited at first to see if she just was going to run all the way around. And then I decided, all right, fine, I'll go catch her on the other side of the house. As I walked around the side of the house, and this is where I guess I had my first, um, like, fun Thing to reflect on to kind of help me get out of my mood because I look for fun things to reflect on or happy things or positive things to reflect on to help me snap out of a mood. Um, I was coming from around the house and she literally, like here's the edge of the house, she was sitting looking this way and then looking around to see if I was coming. She was literally like looking around the edge of the house to see if I was, you know, so she's like this to see if I was coming the way she thought I was going to be coming. So I surprised her when I came around the side from behind her. And I, you know, I was able to catch her and she stayed for me to catch her. And then we went in and, and one of the things that you have to know about training dogs, and this is just a little tidbit, is you can't punish them when you finally catch them. You can't punish them when they finally come because you're just going to make, you're going to influence them even more to work harder to stay away. Uh, so you always have to still be happy that they let you catch them. You have to still be happy that they came when they were finally, you know, they finally came when they were called. A lot of people make a mistake of like beating the dog, which I would never do, but I've seen it, you know, where people will really reprimand the dog 
for you know not coming when they were called. Well, next time they're definitely not going to come because look at what that meant. Look at what that what that was in what was in store for them when they did get allowed to be caught. So you got to anyway. That's just a dog training note. So then my mud flap thing. You know, I ripped my mud flap right off my truck. Now my first thing is I text my boss to tell him. You know, I was trying to keep the load in the driveway and, you know, I ripped the darn mud flap off. So I'm going to try to find some way to get it put back on and then, uh, you know, and basically like I'm going offline for a little while because I'm going to try to get it fixed. I'm going to try to fix it. And I stopped at one truck, which looked like they definitely had a utility body on it. And there's, to me, there was no reason this guy actually did not have a drill. Maybe not a drill. You know, uh, it's possible the guy didn't have a drill. But I'm pretty certain he had a socket wrench, you know. But anyway, they were nice and toasty in their truck. And it was cold. It was, you know, early in the morning. So these guys were like, no, sorry. And that's fine. You know, I said thank you. And I went about my day. And I, right before I figured out what I was going to do next, a uh, little van, little like electrician van came through and I, you know, put my truck in gear and I followed him back around the, the site that I had just drove off of and I got up to his door and I said, you look like somebody who might have a drill. And, uh. You know, he asked me for what, and he, you know, at first he had that look on his face like, look, I just want to enjoy my coffee, you know, and I was like, but, you know, it's all in the approach, and if you look like you're just, you know, you're not trying to bother the person, but you really could use their help for something, so he was nice enough to get out of his truck and get me a drill, and then we, you know, we determined what size bit I needed, and this, that, and the other thing, and then um, he didn't have sockets, so again, like, okay, so... He didn't have all the right tools, but he got me started, right? And I had to get the, the mud flap off in order to drill the new holes. Or not the mud flap. I, I had to get the old bolts off in order to drill the new holes in the right place. So I had to use, um, God, what was it? A, uh, I got it, monkey wrench and a um, set of... They weren't really vice grips, they weren't really pliers, it's kind of hard to describe what they were. But anyway, they made it a challenge, they made it tough to do, but I got it done, I got it off, and drilled my holes, and then another roofing guy pulled in, and before I exhausted myself trying to put the mud flat back on with these two other tools, I went over and bothered them because they were still kind of getting their stuff out of the truck and they were, you know, they weren't up on the roof yet. And uh, I was able to talk them into um, looking for socket for me. Sorry, I'm getting a little distracted because I'm like, I'm thinking of all of the things that I need to tell you about that. So, okay. So here's what happened for me. I recognize that I was still kind of being punished by the guy who didn't, ha not punished by him, but punished for my negative energy because the guy could have helped me with, um, you know, having a socket, the first guy that I talked to, he didn't. So I had to still struggle. Um, but then when the second guy came, you know, there's a lot of language barriers here, and I've always said I really, 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 really want to learn how to speak Spanish. It's something I've always really wanted to do, and I think it would certainly benefit me in some of these job sites that I'm on. But I walk up to the van, and I'm prepared to do my charades, because I actually have a pretty good rapport with some of the guys that I work with that don't really speak English. But we play, like, games of charades, and we get, we get it done, you know, like... We really do communicate well through this little game of charades. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to figure out how to charades socket wrench, you know? Like, i got to figure out how to charades this. Well, the first guy definitely didn't speak English, and he kind of just looked at me like, yeah, I'm not your guy. And then the second guy actually, like, said out loud, like, you know, can I help you? But he said it, you know, with a thick accent, but he spoke English, so woohoo, you know, that was a bonus. And spoke English well enough to know exactly what I was asking for and knew where in his truck he might have something like that. And 
So he gave me the sockets. And much, much faster, I got my truck fixed. So I got my truck fixed. And then, then my boss shows up on the job and he hadn't even noticed my text message telling him anything was wrong in the first place. <laughs> so it's all fixed, so none, none the wiser. I mean, he, we talked about it, but you know what I mean? Like he's like, oh, I just read your text. He's like, oh, okay. And I said, well, I got it back on and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, here's my thing. I could tell, obviously, before I left with the dog, that my day was unfolding attached to that negative thing that was going on, right? It was attached to that for sure. So now what do I do? Now what do I do? How do I stop? It's only like 8 o'clock in the morning still, you know? How do I stop this from becoming the rest of my day? How do I stop this from being hitting every traffic light? How do I stop this from having every farm tractor pull out in front of me and, you know, drive really slow or lose part of their load in front of me? How do I stop this from becoming my day? Well, I recovered the applesauce by having something to put it in. I recovered the missing lid by having another thing that had a lid. My dog was actually cute, even though it was, you know, bad timing. My dog was actually cute, something I can like grab onto and say that was actually kind of cute. I can look back in my mind and see her sitting there like, like a little kid all excited that mommy's going to come around the corner any minute now and I'm going to jump out. And, um, to, to have, you know, something bad happen to my truck and then, you know, with a little work, found the means to fix it myself. Um, so just kind of, and then, and then just even if you give yourself even the extra piece of that, proud of myself that I didn't go to these guys and go, oh, can you help me? You know, play the whole damsel in distress thing. Can you fix my mud flap? No, do you have the tools that I could borrow so I could go do this? So there's a little level of pride that even got something that could help me. Um, so, I get very winded when I do my stalls, obviously, and talk. Um, so what I did was I started to pick out all the positive aspects of the negative things that were happening. And I started to kind of focus on those. And one of the ones that I hung on the most was seeing Bailey sitting at the edge of the house, looking around the corner, like, she's gonna come any second now. Oh, it's gonna be fun. Um, and it was so cute because that's what her body looked like. It looked like, like she was just so excited for, to, you know, I'm going to come any minute now and, and she's going to, I don't know what her plan was probably to go ah, and then run, but uh, it was just really cute to see her actually like anticipating my coming around the corner. Um, I was able to let that really just replay and replay and still to this moment I still see it. I can keep replaying it and replaying it. I still see her big white body in the dark. I can still see how she was sitting. I could still see how she was looking around the corner of the house. And I can keep playing that because it was super duper cute. Even in a moment of absolute frustration, it was super duper cute. And I was able to catch her there at that moment. Had she run off, maybe I would have had a, a more difficult time letting that be a strong focus point, but it was super cute. So I asked in my site um, what people's tricks are. If anyone has tricks like that to get themselves snapped out of it and, you know, to reroute their day. And I'm going to pause this because I still have more work to do. Okay, so then, you know, I ask what, what people's tricks might be to um, help them snap out of something like that. You know, my, my tricks are is to use my current situation and find the funny, find the happy, find the enjoyment, find something in my current situation that I can change the path. I don't go looking for, you know, oh, you know, I, I love my pillow. I don't try to find something that's so unrelated that it's really hard to detach. So I try to stay in the, in the moment, but, you know, look for something that had enjoyment potential, you know. 
and then I focus on that. Now, I will say this. Uh, I did ask, you know, tricks. That was my word, tricks. What are your tricks to help you when that kind of thing happens? And uh, my cousin had come back and said, um, well, yes, but they're techniques. Now, I don't know if, if that was said in a, I'm being corrected for calling it a trick and they wanted me to know that tri they're not tricks, they're techniques, or if she doesn't have tricks, she has techniques and her techniques would be too difficult to share in text form. I'm not really sure and it doesn't actually matter, but I just wanted to point out that I'm the type of person that I would listen to somebody's trick because it would, it sounds shorter, right? Than somebody's technique. And, and it's me personally, like if I had a choice between learning somebody's techniques to fix something or learning somebody's tricks to fix something, I'm going to click on the tricks. I'm just gonna, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a reader's digest version of things like that. Like I want the fast, easier, more layman version of how can I do something? Uh, what are the tricks to it? You know? Um, so not to dis discredit somebody's using techniques or liking the, you know, the term technique. Um, for me, it, it, I don't care if it is a actual technique. It's a trick to me. What is the trick? My trick is, I look for something about my current situation that I can find some kind of enjoyment about, even the slightest bit. Like I said, you know, the dog is still giving me a hard time, but I found her posture. I found her enthusiasm. I found her excitement to, to maybe keep the game going when I really didn't want it to keep going. I found that funny. And I was able to use humor in that situation to keep me grounded and then to turn it completely around. My rest of my day, from the time I flipped my mud, mud you know, got my mud flap back on, my rest of my day was plenty fun. I didn't have any issues. I didn't have any, you know, concerns. I didn't have any encounters that I wish I didn't have. I didn't have any mishaps. I didn't have anything go wrong. My day went perfectly fine thereafter. I was able to turn it around because I changed my energy. Could I have easily stayed in a negative tear? Could I have easily then had all these other things now to, to dwell on? Like, I can't believe this happened, and then I can't believe this happened, I can't believe... Oh, sure. And absolutely could have done that and found myself really in a situation where... God knows what else could have happened, you know, more and more negative things because, you know, law of attraction is, is real. <laughs> There's nothing, no evidence whatsoever to disprove it. And, you know, it attracts things to it based on, you know, what vibration you've got going out there. So if I'm negatively throwing energy out there, negative energy comes back. Um... So I was just kind of unloading my day, I guess, a little bit, but to say, you know, hey, your day could start out where, you know, you're in a really bad mood, and then just watch. Because, see, like, my bad mood, the only poignant thing about my bad mood was, was uh, I was prepared to share it. And then I made the extra steps to make sure I erased it. Um, but it didn't change how my day got started. It didn't change where my vibration was until I started to notice the things that were happening, the things that were being attracted to me through my negative attitude. So that's, uh, that's my trick, I guess. And like I said, I would be more likely to uh, look for a trick than a technique. Techniques always just sound more involved to me, you know? There's so much more I would need to do and know and study and understand in a technique. But yet, a trick, a trick is quick, a trick is easy. So that's why I asked what somebody's tricks were. Um, 
but of course if techniques are what you use by all means whatever helps you I'm just saying to me it was a trick I was actually looking for I wasn't looking for somebody's technique necessarily